8.3 is just going over more um, with these quadratic equations. We're going to kind of work backwards today with what we're starting with. Um, so the first section within these notes, we're writing a quadratic formula or a quadratic equation given the solutions. So these are what x is equal to. In order to do these, you're going to set both of the given terms or given numbers uh, to be equal to x, and then you're going to move them over and then FOIL. So if we look at example 1a, we have 4 and negative 6. This is telling us that x is equal to 4 and x is equal to negative 6. If we move the 4 over, we would subtract it from each side, and we get that x minus 4 is equal to 0. For the 6, we would add it to both sides, and we get that x plus 6 is equal to 0. So this means that we have x minus 4 as well as x plus 6. If we just FOIL these out, that x times x is x squared, x times 6 is 6x, the negative 4 times x is negative 4x, and negative 4 times 6 is negative 24. We combine those like terms in the middle, and we have x squared plus 2x minus 24 is equal to 0. For example, b, we're given the negative square root of 2 as well as positive square root of 2. So again, we can set both of these equal to x. We can move these over. So we would add the square root of 2 to both sides here. And we would also subtract the square root of 2. So we would get x plus the square root of 2 is equal to 0, as well as x minus the square root of 2 is equal to 0. From here, we can set these into, put these in parentheses, so x plus the square root of 2 times x minus the square root of 2, and then we can just FOIL them. So x times x is x squared, x times the negative square root of 2 is negative square root of 2, the square root of 2 times x is a positive square root of 2, and then these are x, so this x would actually go in front, in front, and then we have the negative square root of 2 times 2, which is 4. These Square, these x squared 2's are opposites, so they cancel each other out. We have the square root of 4, so it's x squared minus 2. We can't do anything else with this, so that is our answer. For example, C, we're given negative 3i and positive 3i. So again, if we take these, we set them both equal to x. We're going to move them over, so we're going to add 3i to both sides for 1. We subtract 3i to both sides for the other. We get x plus 3i is equal to 0, as well as x minus 3i is equal to 0. From here, put them in parentheses, so x plus 3i times x minus 3i, and FOIL them x times x is x squared, x times negative 3i is negative 3xi, 3i times x is a positive 3xi, and the 3i times negative 3i is negative 9i squared. These 3x times i's cancel out, so we have x squared minus 9 times negative 1. 9 times negative 1 is positive 9, so that's x squared plus 9. So again, with these, we're just working backwards. So when you're given two terms or any terms, and you're asked to write a quadratic equation, you also want to make sure that these are all set equal to 0 because they're asking for an equation. Um, take them, set them equal to x, Move the term over, FOIL it out, make sure your equation set equal to zero. For our next set of examples, we're using the discriminant to determine whether each polynomial can actually be factored. Remember, when we use the discriminant, that's that b squared minus 4 times a times c. If we get an answer that is greater than 1, we have two real solutions, which means it can be factored. If we get 
0, we have one real solution, so that means we still can factor it. And then if we get something that is less than 0, we have two imaginary solutions, which means we cannot factor it. So if we use our discriminant and we get an answer that's less than 0, that's when we know we cannot factor it. So if we look at example 2a, we're given 6x squared plus x minus 15. a is 6, b is 1, c is negative 15. Using our discriminant, that's b squared minus 4 times a times c. This is going to give us 1 squared minus 4 times 6 times negative 15. From here, that 1 squared is 1. The negative 4 times 6 is negative 24. Negative 24 times negative 15 is a positive 360. So if we add these, we get 361. 361 is greater than 0, so yes, this can be factored. For example, B, we have 5x squared minus 3x plus 2. This is giving us an A of 5, B of negative 3, and C of 2. So use your discriminant. Plug in your values. You're going to have negative 3 squared minus 4 times 5 times 2. The negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. Negative 20 times 2 is negative 40. So 9 minus 40 gives us negative 31. Negative 31 is less than 0, so this cannot be factored. The last part of your lesson for 8.3 goes over these quadratic equations and asks you to factor them and to solve when you're given something other than just x. So if you look at example 3, it's giving us x plus 15 squared minus 3 times x minus, or sorry, x plus 15 minus 18 is equal to 0. There's two ways to do this. The first, you can FOIL or you can separate the x plus 15 squared, FOIL it out, distribute the negative 3, combine your like terms, and then factor it that way. Or what you can do is you can treat this x plus 15 as x. You see that this is the same exact thing as saying x squared minus 3x minus 18 is equal to 0. It's very similar. The only difference is x is really x plus 15 in this case, not just the x. So when we factor this, we would take the factors of negative 18 that add up to be negative 3. You have 3 and negative 6. So this would factor out to be x plus 3 times x minus 6 is equal to 0. However, in this case, your x is really x plus 15 x is equal to x plus 15. So when you factored it into that x plus 3 times x minus 6 is equal to 0, replace the x that you have there with the x plus 15. So this is going to be x plus 15 plus 3 times x plus 15 minus 6 is equal to 0. If you will need to, get rid of your parentheses. You're going to have x plus 15 plus 3 times x plus 15 minus 6 is equal to 0. You can either combine your like terms in your parentheses, then set each set of parentheses equal to 0 and solve, or you can set them both equal to 0 now and then do the same. So if you were to combine your like terms within each set of parentheses, you're going to have x plus 18 times x plus 9 is equal to 0. From here, you can set both of these equal to 0, so you'll have x plus 18 is equal to 0, as well as x plus 9 is equal to 0, and you just solve like normal. 
So we subtract the 18 from each side. You have x is equal to negative 18. Subtract the 9 from each side. You have x is equal to negative 9. So your two solutions here are negative 18 and negative 9. For example, 4, we're given x squared plus 2 squared minus 11 times x squared plus 2 plus 24 is equal to 0. So if you see here that x squared plus 2, we're going to represent it as x. So this is just going to be rewritten as x squared minus 11x plus 24 is equal to 0. You want to find your factors of 24 that add up to be negative 11. We have negative 3 and negative 8 that give us negative 11 when we combine them and multiply them to get the positive 24. So this factors out to be x minus 3 times x minus 8 is equal to 0. We're going to replace the x with that x squared plus 2. So this is going to, just going to be x squared plus 2 minus 3 times x squared plus 2 minus 8 is equal to 0. I'd get rid of my parentheses within each bracket and combine like terms from here. So I'm going to have x squared plus 2 minus 3 times x squared plus 2 minus 8 is equal to 0. From here, we're going to have x, my, x, sorry, x squared minus 1 as well as x squared minus 6 is equal to 0. We can set both of these equal to 0. So we have x squared minus 1 is equal to 0, as well as x squared minus 6 is equal to 0. We can move the 1 over by adding it to both sides. We get x squared is equal to 1. We can do the same with the 6 and add it to both sides. We get x squared is equal to 6. From here, we can take the square root of both sides. That will cancel out the x squared to just be x. And we have x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1, which is plus or minus 1, as well as x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 6, which is going to stay the square root of 6.